everyone. Welcome to JD Chemistry. Guys, this is our second video in this series. In the first video, we have covered axial chirality, chiral planes, helicity, and we have studied about alenes, spiranes, admetanes, cyclophanes, and many more molecules, its RX nomenclature and optical activity. In this particular video, we will be learning about the optical activity of hetero containing hetero atom containing molecules like nitrogen, phosphorus, and sulfur. And you will be seeing that what are invertomers, what is pyramidal inversion, and how we can get the optical stability with these hetero atom containing organic molecules. The topic is very important for MSc chemistry students and also for CSIR NET and GATE students. Guys, if you want me to prepare a video on any particular topic, you please write it in the comment section. And also, if you like my videos, do subscribe my channel and share it with your friends. Let's start. First, we will see the optical activity with respect to the nitrogen. And here, you will be seeing the question frequently, what are invertomers? Give examples. So basically, in vertomers, you will find when you have nitrogen containing hetero atom in the organic molecule. So what are invertomers? When the two conformers interconvert by inversion and having a non-bonding electron pair are called invertomers. Example, amines in isomers are called invertomers. We will understand it by taking this example. You can notice here, so far we have studied carbon having the four different ligands and we call it a tetra coordinated molecule and if the four groups are different, it is called chiral molecule. Similarly, here this nitrogen which is in sp3 hybridization having tetrahedral arrangement, instead of having the fourth group here, we are having the lone pair of electrons. This is the only difference between the carbon and nitrogen containing molecules. So, you can see here two conformers invert, invert or interconvert having a non bonding electron pair. So, nitrogen is having non bonding electron pair, and this is chiral because the three are different ligands here hydrogen, ethyl, and methyl. So, this is you can see R ethyl methyl amine, it is R having, you, as we have seen, it is chiral. And it invert, you can see just it is like inverted like umbrella. This is, that's why somewhere you can also read umbrella effect. Just inverted and this is again having the chiral center, sp3 hybridization. All four are different with lone pair of electron having the configuration as a thylmethylamine. In the next video, we will learn how to do the RS nomenclature of these molecules. So far, therefore, it is called invertomers because these are interconverted. These are the two conformers which are interconverted having the lone pair of electrons. Therefore, it is called invertomers. But being the chiral center, it is optically inactive. Why? Because this inversion takes place through this planar transition state. Where you can see the nitrogen is having the sp2 hybridization, all the three ligands are in the plane and having the 120 degree angle. So, if you compare 104 degree angle in the tetrahedral here or 109 degree, the difference between the angle is not much, and so the energy barrier is less and it interconverts easily to the S isomer via planar conformation. So, it is having the rapid interconversion, therefore also called pyramidal inversion. You can see this is having the pyramidal structure and therefore also familiar term is pyramidal inversion, invertomers and being this planarity, it is optically inactive. So, amines are optically inactive. Though it is having the all four different ligands and having the parallelity, but it is optically inactive because of the rapid racemization. 
50% of each conformer will be there. Therefore, it is optically inactive. Now, we will see how we can stabilize and form the nitrogen containing organic molecule optically active. So, in which condition we can do that? There are actually three ways to do this. In the first case, if you replace the lone pair on the nitrogen with a bond, means you are making it uh, ammonium ion having four different ligands. So, you can see in this particular example, the nitrogen has having all four different ligands and so it is optically active and it, the selenic is stopped here because now you don't have lone pair. So, it prevents the, the bond formation, prevents the tunneling through the nucleus of the nitrogen. Since the tunneling is not possible, the inversion is not possible and therefore you have no inversion here and it is optically active. So, basically quaternary ammonium ions are optically active. So, it is separable in the form of enantiomers. Another example, you have the tertiary amine oxides. Here again, four different ligands. So, it is stable configuration having the chirality and so it is optically active. There are many kind of questions. They ask whether the following molecule is chiral or not. Yes, it is chiral because having four different ligands. Whether the following molecule is optically active. Yes, it is optically active. All four are having the bond formation and the tunneling effect and inversion is not possible and therefore it is optically active. Whether the following configuration is stable or not or optically stable or not. So, such kind of questions you will get the answer remains the same here. So, this is the first possibility to make nitrogen containing organic molecule optically active and separable or resolvable. The second option is if the nitrogen is present in the three membered ring. How? Best example is SRAD. You can see here the three membered ring is having 120 degree, like here 60 degree angle is there, and to achieve the planar transition state, it should have 120 degree bond angle. So from 60 to 120 degree, there is a huge angle distortion, and so the pyramidal inversion is not possible. And therefore, it is optically active and can be resolved as enantiomers. This is the cis 1 chloro 2 methyl azurity. The two bulky groups are on the same side. So, this is the cis form of it. And it is configurationally stable. And so, it is optically active and chiral. You can notice here nitrogen is having four different groups here. With respect to this nitrogen, you have four different groups. And so, it is optically active and chiral. Similarly, the trans isomer of it, where the two bulky, bulky groups are opposite to each other, are configurationally stable, resolvable and optically active. The reason behind is because it cannot attain the 120 degree bond angle that is required for sp2 hybridization. And the third possibility is if the nitrogen is present in the ring junction in the bridge ring system. Like if this kind of uh, structure is there, this is uh, called progress base tri-coordinated nitrogen. Here the inversion is not at all possible because without bond breaking. As you can notice in the case of amines, the inversion took place without the bond breaking. Here, the inversion cannot take place without bond breaking and therefore inversion cannot occur and so it is configurationally stable and having the parallel center and optically activity. Here as well, you have all four different ligands. The load pair are not displayed here. So, these are the three ways we have learned where you have the nitrogen containing organic molecules optically active. They may also ask the synthesis of azeridine or derivative of it by a simple organic reaction. So, since we are talking about optically active azeridine here, so optically active molecules, if you synthesize it, it is called asymmetric synthesis. 
since here we are designing the three member train and here we are going to form epoxide therefore the term comes asymmetric epoxidation. Here we are taking diphenyl methylene methyl amine in the presence of peroxyamphoric acid. Peroxy acids bring the oxidation on the double bond and form the epoxide. And you can see here the nitrogen is there in the three member ring with the lone pair four different ligand it is optically active. Now this is your practice question. They may ask any of these questions. Uh, they will give you the structures. All are having here nitrogen containing organic molecule. And they may ask like which is optically stable. So if you notice the first structure here you have all the four different ligands. So it is chiral but with this lone pair it is inversion is possible. Pyramidal inversion is possible. And therefore it will be optically unstable, optically inactive. While the second is nitrogen being present in the three member ring, it is optically stable. The third structure again, you have the um, uh, amine derivative, lone pair is there, so pyramidal inversion will be there and therefore it is optically inactive or unstable. The fourth one is again, you are having the nitrogen with, you can again notice here, it is uh, optically unstable because nitrogen is having three bond here, it is not the four bonds involved. So it means the fourth one is the lone pair here. So if the fourth one is lone pair means the pyramidal inversion is possible. And so it will be optically unstable. So like that you can practice. Next question is they are asking the optical activity of the phosphorus. Basically the suitably substituted phosphines. So we have to find out whether the phosphines are optically active or inactive like amines. So here a few points to keep in your mind that the activation energy for the pyramidal inversion at phosphorus is very high. Because here the bond angle is 90 degree for the phosphorus containing amines and to achieve the planar structure from 90 to 120 degree, there is a huge difference in the bond angle and therefore a large distortion is required to achieve the planar transition state. And so the pyramidal inversion is not possible with the three non-identical substituent. At room temperature, you can resolve these as enantiomers. So we will see, you have phosphorus having all three different ligands. The fourth is the lone pair, but here this is configurationally stable. The pyramidal inversion is not possible like it was there in amines. You can separate it and it is optically active. So phosphines are optically active while amines are optically inactive. The reason is the activation energy for the pyramidal inversion is very high in case of phosphine while it is very less in case of amines. Similarly, they may ask the structure of optically active phosphonium salts and sulfonium salts. So, this is again the activation energy for the pyramidal inversion at phosphorus and sulfur is very high. Therefore, the pyramidal inversion is not possible. And so, all the phosphorus and sulfur containing molecules will be optically active. So this phosphorus having all four different ligands is optically active. It's a phosphonium ion. While if you have phosphorus in the ring and having all four different ligands, the pyramidal inversion is not at all possible being phosphorus in the ring. And therefore, it will be having much more optical activity. Here you have sulfur with three different ligands and a lone pair. The reason is the same like phosphorus containing molecule phosphine. It is optically active because it is the non-planar configuration. The activation energy is very high to achieve the planar structure, planar transition state. Therefore, the inversion is not possible and so it is optically 
active. So like phosphine, the sulfur containing molecule is also optically active. Similarly, the sulfoxides are optically active. The reason is the same. And so, we can say all the above molecules are optically active. And this is how we can find out the optical activity of nitrogen, sulfur and phosphorus containing organic molecules. In the next video, we will learn about the RS nomenclature of these molecules. Happy learning!